My name is DJ Schurz. I am a roboticist, and I'm the CEO of a company called Easy Robot. And I build robots, and I build robot kits to allow people to build personal robots at home. All right, so in three sentences or less, how would you describe the current technological landscape in Alberta? Well, it's actually kind of funny, is because in the past couple months, um, Easy Robot's success has been worldwide. So everything that I've been doing has been going international. We've been selling to Russia, Germany, Australia, um, a lot to the U.S., and not much in Canada. So what I've been noticing is that in Canada, there's a lot of people who aren't really adapting new technologies. So they're doing it so for oil and gas, they're doing it for existing industries that already have an infrastructure and bring in profit, but for new industries, which are higher risk, uh, Canadians technically kind of fall back a little bit and they wait for someone else to do it first. Okay. So what are some future trends you foresee in technology that will impact the province over the next few years? Well, what I've noticed recently, so when I was just describing what I just did, that was previous, that was in the past couple months. So what's been happening lately is when organizations have been put together. For example, Beakerhead, um, you know, Protospace, and a few other different communities that have been being created, and what their concept is, is they're trying to get people, just average people, to be educated on the fact that there is new growing technologies. And that in itself is actually like a, like a uh, it's falling down to companies. And these companies, because the companies employ these employees, and they actually end up doing all of the work, and they go, you know what, I have a good idea. I can take a technology I've learned from something on my free time through Beakerhead or Portispace and bring it to the actual company. So employees are now starting to adapt new technologies and bring it into the workplace. And then the companies are actually saying, hey, this is a really good idea, and they're actually letting it happen. Very cool. Um, so along that stream as well, what are some of the biggest barriers to working with technology as an entrepreneur right now? Uh, that's, that's funny is because uh, I could probably talk about this one for quite a while, <laughs> but I'm not going to. So I'm going to refrain from, from uh, getting too stressed out about thinking about that. The, the, the biggest issue that I think we experience, uh, specifically that I experience, is educating people, and that's uh, consumer comfort. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I was to provide a product, which I do to, to average consumers, the most difficult part, because it is a new technology, is uh, making them feel comfortable with, with that purchase, making them feel comfortable that it's a technology that they can understand. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of do away from like the regular manuals. You know, you open up a piece of paper and you have a, you know, you look at it and you read and you follow those instructions. Now we're getting into tutorial videos. We're actually setting up videos that people can watch and they can follow through and they can actually go along with step by step by step. That yeah. allows them to be able to feel more comfortable with things. So before a product is actually um, purchased by the customer, seeing and walking through the step of using it through videos really helps aid them to go understand. And now that's at a consumer level, but you could bring that up to a, a professional level in a business too, is that a business can offer its service by providing videos and, and examples and tutorials to their customers too. So I see that um, technology is definitely getting more hands-on and it's getting more video because now that we have the internet, we're allowed to actually share a lot more media than we could before. Right. So going off the last question there, your ideal solution to the issue is better education for consumers and investors? Uh, better education, most definitely. And taking advantage of uh, YouTube, for example, and uh, even Facebook and social networking sites. Now, I know that goes on uh, a lot of advertising methods and a lot of people talk about, hey, you have to get social. Mm -hmm. And there is absolute truth in that at all, at all different perspectives you look at it. Because the fact remains is people at home Sometimes they're sitting there watching TV, but they want to have a friend next to them, but they don't want the friend sitting next to them because, you know, they're in their pajamas or something. So having a computer in front of you allows you to be able to communicate with all of your friends, people on the other side of the planet, and you can share ideas, you can share your products, you can share your concepts and thoughts and feelings and everything. So that also works when you're talking about an actual technology. So, for example, you know, with Easy Robot, we have people that are working on the project that are remote. We have people that stay at home, you know. Um, I work late hours and you know, and I wake up in the morning and I leave emails to everybody and say this is what I was working on and this is what I've done. So technology has become, and social networking has become a replacement for the telephone, for actually sitting down and talking to somebody. And it's not something to fear because if it's handled correctly, it's not a bad thing. You just have to make sure that your information is just you know, private to those that uh, you actually want people to see. So you're a big fan of the digital office then? Most definitely. Uh, <laughs> 
I we so Easy Robot actually operates out of my home. So when you see all these videos and you see this background and everything, this is one of the rooms that we operated. Uh, we converted most of my basement into a lab, and we have all the other rooms of the house, the storage boxes, and all that kind of stuff. So um, we have people. I have employees that actually work out of the, my home, and they come over here, and we have this you know regular startup mentality. So we can spend all our time here, but we can also they can work from home too, and they can share that information, and we can share. Um, you know, education and, and new technologies. And again, when you do that in your company, and you're doing that with your friends, there's no reason why you can't share that to all of your your uh, your customers and to your entire industry. And right. that's something that a lot of companies somewhat fear because they feel that you know getting social networks devalues their actual product because or their company because it makes people look at them and go, well, they're not as elite because they have a social networking site, and it's right. can't anymore. From, from the, the opposite, is that people actually want to see and want to engage with your company, and that's very important. All right, uh, last question. If you could sit down and speak with any potential mentor, dead or alive, who would it be and why? This is a really easy answer, and that <laughs> would be Steve Jobs. Um, I would say that almost everything that I've done throughout most of my life has been, even before you know the recent uh, publicity of Steve Jobs over the past couple of years since the iPod and the iPhone, prior to that I was a, an Apple Guy, so I programmed on the Apple IIe, and uh, you know I had the little old Apple rainbow stickers on my in my house when I was a kid, and you know in the mirrors and stuff. And that was something that came from his. Uh, you, you never actually got to meet him back then because he didn't actually have a internet or a network persona. There was no you know you could just look at a, a magazine article or an interview or something in a magazine, and that was the most you got of this guy. But his personality is reflected in the actual product. Mm -hmm. And I think I've adapted a lot of that personality and a lot of that perspective when I develop things. So the most important thing to me is not how I would use a product, but how would my mom use a product? How would somebody that doesn't know how to use a computer use a product? And with technology, you can have that perspective. It's kind of scary because you're actually trying to do the code, you're trying to do the design, but then you take a couple steps back and you're in a total different world and you're looking at the product going, oh my god, you know, I don't know anything about this thing anymore. Hard to have that transition. It's almost like having two personalities in a way. <laughs> so Steve Jobs most definitely had a couple different personalities upstairs, and they were all good, and they all worked very well together. Fantastic.